Hello and welcome to Late Night Chat where we are in my bathroom because Cooper is trying to go to sleep and it's Monday night and we have school tomorrow but sometimes you got to do what you got to do when you're a single mama. I just got back from Boise. We went up for the weekend to help Steve with some exciting news. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't drop. Don't fall on me. Um, no, I'm not pregnant. No, I'm not engaged. No, we are not having a child. No, we're not getting married. But there's some exciting news coming your guys' way. But I will let him be the one to tell you. I don't want to spoil that. So anyways, I was up in, we were up in Boise for the weekend. And also, okay, let's address a couple of things. First off, I've worn this sweater before. It's called Obey. No, I do not worship the devil. I know that this upside cross down thingy, whatever. I just thought it was like a cool hip fashion symbol thing that it's like at this cool store that's in our local mall. I don't worship the the devil, I don't condone worshiping the devil. I believe that the devil, Saint and Lucifer is a real person. But do I personally think he's my homie? No, I am not down with that. So for everybody out there saying that I should really research my clothing and look at this cross upside down, blah, blah, blah. I don't know about you guys, but I don't wear things clothing for religious or political statements. I wear them because I feel comfortable in them and I want to clothe my body. Um, so I'm sorry, but if I was like a nun or something and I needed to wear that get up, then maybe, or a Jew and wear one of those hats, I guess only the guys wear those. Anyways, I don't worship the devil, so whew, good thing we put that rumor to rest. Second of, off, a lot of you have asked me about this little necklace with the little star. This is kind of a cool story. When my mother was 21, she was working at a clothing store. Or, I lied. She was working at a jewelry store, and she bought this, and she said, one day when I have a daughter, I'm going to give it to her on her 21st birthday. And so my mother gave me this little necklace. Look at this cute little star when I turned 21 and I don't know where she got it from and a lot of you have been asking. So it's true vintage necklace. I don't know, I never take it off rarely and I love it with all my heart. I lost it for a while and then when I moved to California I was doing the laundry one day, said a quick little prayer and it randomly showed up. So like I was folding my laundry and it fell out of a pocket. Don't you just love when that happens? And you're just like, thank you, I needed to find that. So. Um, if this makes you guys feel better, does this make you feel better if I do this so that I'm not a devil worshiper? Um, but yeah, so that's where that is. I'm not a devil worshiper. S exciting news for Steve and I. He's in Boise. I'm in Pocatello. It's three and a half hours apart. I went up there to help him with this weekend. That's why Friday's video didn't go up. Fitness Friday, my laptop was in his truck and I had to drive my car up as well. And then today's video was late because I was helping him today and I had to drive home late. So anyways, after all those excuses, I was driving and thinking on the way home Oh, wait, lastly, I should remind you that the Broncos won their playoff game and they're going to the Super Bowl. And I'm so excited. I couldn't even be happier. During the game, I was just like trying to record my actions for tomorrow's video, which is too funny. Tuesday, I was going to record my reactions because usually I get really heated and like jumping on the couch and yelling and cussing a lot. And Cooper's like, Mom, I heard that. Mom, Mom. But the game was just so much like just chill and very well played that I really didn't even need to say anything about my reaction. So, but I do have a lot of commentary for tomorrow's video and Steve has some input as well. So you guys don't forget to check that out. Also, Monday Motivation, my hometown of Pocatello, Idaho. We have Idaho State University, the home of the Bengals. Um, my really good friend, Jordan Peterson, he's been a really good friend since seventh grade, has created an ISU rugby team. Well, the university here doesn't have enough money to fund the rugby team through athletics. So they said, okay, if you can come up with the money to keep the program running, you can be listed as under student affairs and you can have this rugby team. Well, Jordan put this whole team together. They've raised the money and they're doing really well. And they've done really well in the past couple of years. And I think they've like been undefeated and won some cool things that rugby teams win. I don't know. I've got, I went to a game and I was just like, wow, this is a lot different than football. And there's a part where they like lift each other up and kind of look like cheerleaders gone mad. And I feel like I could help them with their lifts. They weren't technically right, but was like whatever, lift each other up and yell things and get in this little hunch of a circle and looks like you're all smelling each other's butts. I don't get it, but it looks freaking hard and it's intense because they don't wear pads. So long story short, he's trying to raise money 
for their rugby team to stay together and to get new jerseys. And um, they are actually doing a contest with other rugby teams to see who can have the most votes for their team. And right now, I think they are in first or second place by barely a couple votes. So please, please go vote for the Idaho State rugby team. They're in the orange shirts. I will leave the link below. It's also on my Instagram page in my bio. And tell Jordan I sent you, and let's please help them win. It'd be a really nice thing to do, just a good cause for humankind to help their team win new shirts. So go rugby. If you can explain the sport to me, I will love you that much more. And no, I don't want to play because it looks really, really, really hard. So there's kind of catching you up for the week. Um... Wednesday is going to be a vlog of me horseback riding. Oh, that's fun. And some just daily tasks that Cooper and I do. Thursday is going to be tip Thursday. We're going to be doing a fun makeup thing that I have this big bin and box of old makeup. I'm like, what am I going to do with all this makeup? So I'm going to randomly draw some items from there and do a whole makeup look on Thursday. Guys, I know you're looking forward to that one. And then Friday, I'm going to show you guys how to do a stair workout at this place called the Holt Arena. It's actually Idaho State's football field so I can take you there and show you guys and then we're going to be doing a workout a mommy and me workout with Cooper and I which I try to do on Friday but my computer was in Steve's truck so I couldn't upload the footage what are you doing you are supposed to be in bed you guys tell Cooper to go to bed come here come say hi and then you got to get in bed oh he's a naked boy say hi hey. guys hi. what are you doing he doesn't feel the best I think he's a widow car sick because you were watching despicable me despicable me too in the car huh and I think that sometimes makes you car sick, huh? Did you, we need a brush and say prayers, huh? Okay, give me a kiss and go lay in the bed. I got to finish motivating all these people. What do you think motivation means? Mm -hmm. You don't know? Mm -hmm. Come on, tell me. No idea? What makes you happy? What makes you feel like you want to get something done and work hard? I know. I know. It's called bribery, money, chocolate, video games, Minecraft, P.S., what do you think about Stampy Cat adding you to his love world? He's love garden. Him. Oh, Cooper is a little sad. Stampy Cat, can you add Cooper to your love garden? Is that what it's called? Yes. Love garden. But because we the love the Shay Tards, but he really wants Cooper's name. Because Cooper is the one that showed Shay those videos. And was when Shay and Colette were kindly watching Cooper, Shay would go in every day and Cooper was like, watching Stampy Cat and Stampy Cat's the only gamer that I will allow my child to watch because all of you other gamers out there well I should say the most majority of you you cuss and you say inappropriate things and it's like hello you're playing a children's game don't swear and cuss like that huh or we're gonna spank your little butts okay anyway see me kiss go get in bed love you wipe off that lipstick sorry um okay so Monday motivation I have a really good story I wanted to tell you guys sorry this is seven minutes in but I know you just love hanging out with me huh in my bathroom in my devil worship shirt Holla. um okay so have you ever had somebody give you a compliment but you kind of felt like it was a little bit passive aggressive like it was a compliment but at the same time it was kind of like that could be also taken as hurtful well this is what happened to me. And, and you don't know if you should be offended or if it was like a compliment. You're kind of like, oh, what did you mean by that? You know? So you're not sure how to take it. This kind of happened to me. Um, this girl that I went to high school with that I've always thought was beautiful and really nice. I keep cutting off my head. I'm sorry. Um, and I never had a problem with. We even went to middle school together. I always thought we were cool and everything was fine. Um, she posted something on Facebook. Oh, good old Facebook drama. And I don't want to call her out, and I don't want anyone to obviously, like, dig into this further than it needs to be, but it's a really good, like, lesson in the end. So, um, anyways, I didn't think we ever had a problem. We didn't really hang out with the same people, but I always really liked her, and I felt like I was kind to her, and I always thought she was beautiful. She has this dark, dark hair and these light, light eyes and beautiful skin, and I just was very admirable of her, and it seemed like she always had a lot of strength and a lot of inner confidence, and I always really love that because that's something I've kind of always struggled with. So anyways, in high school, we never had a problem or anything. We always, you know, would talk and catch up. And I haven't talked to her in years, but we've been Facebook friends. You know, you have those people in your life. And she made this comment on Facebook and it kind of said something to the fact like this. And again, I'm not calling her out. This is just to help us kind of open up our height, our eyes and hearts and mind, eyes and hearts, minds, butts, whatever. And she said something to the fact on... Um, wow, I wish I had Carly Butler's job. It would be so easy to have a life just like that just because you have blonde hair and blue eyes, something like that. So I took it as, 
okay, she's calling me pretty, but she's only saying that I have a job because of the way that I look, which means I'm not talented, which means I have nothing to offer the world but my looks. And to me, that's really, really hurtful because I already have to deal with enough hate on YouTube. You guys know that. And you know, it's hard to be Shay Carl's sister because it's like, oh, you just are successful on YouTube because of Shay Carl and he's your brother. And you know, as much as obviously that's true, Shay introduced me to the whole YouTube world and I would never deny that. I'm always grateful. I view Shay now as like a boss. You know, he hired me kind of for the job, but I don't keep my job because he's my boss. If I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing or something that's moderately, minimally working, then obviously I want to be able to maintain or keep my job. And so to me, it's just a little bit hurtful because I feel like I struggle with that enough on the daily as it is of, do I really have a place here? Am I really reaching somebody what, what, what are all these videos for? Is it for vain reasons? Do I want to just grow numbers? Do I want to be recognized? What, what's the point of me doing YouTube? And honestly, at the end of the day, I will be the first to admit that I'm not really that talented at anything. I don't know particularly more than anybody else about fitness or makeup or being a mom or figuring out this life any more than you guys do. What I do respect about myself is I'm honest and I'm willing to call myself out and I'm willing to share that with other people in hopes that maybe they can learn from it and 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 make their lives better. And and to me, that's what I feel like this whole world is about. If, if we're not, is about, if we're not helping each other proactively become better people and lifting each, each other up along the way, then I don't understand why we're even here on this earth. Because if, if it was only, if you were only here on this planet or this job of this life to help yourself and to focus on yourself, I feel like eventually we'd get really sick and we would like curl up and die. Because if you think about it, the, the, the basic human needs love and affection and shelter and water and food and physical touch, but we need those things. And they've shown studies with um, kids in orphanages where they just put the kids in the bed, didn't give them any physical attention, just gave them their daily needs, food, water, clothing. And then the kids, they, were, they put other kids, you know, in a different bed and picked them up and played with them and sang to them. And the success stories on, compared, comparatively speaking to the two, was night and day difference. And I think that that is so true. As humans, we need that interaction and we need that positive support and that hope and that little bit of light in our lives where we get through the end of the day and we feel like, oh, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I can get up to tomorrow. And then somebody or something happens and just gives us that little bit of spark and keeps us hanging on. And we're like, okay, I can do this. I can make it. And so Going back to this Facebook thing, I asked myself, I'm like, I could be offended and I could let her hurt my feelings or I could reach out and just try to talk to her. And, you know, it's funny because I know I'm the one, I'm one to be offended easily. I take things very personally and I swear I feel things on a deeper level than other people because I'm always like emotionally feeling things that most people are like, why would that hurt your feelings or why would that be a consideration to you? But I guess I just, I care too much sometimes. And so I, I messaged her and I was like, hey, if you think YouTube's an easy thing and you think that all you need is looks, I will be the first to help you put up a channel and, you know, do these things. That's funny that people think that that's all you need to have on YouTube. And I said, but if you really know the community of YouTube, you would know it's kind of like a family and people will call you out and they will see you for the things that sometimes you don't want to see yourself for. And so if you think that this is the only reason why I have a job, then I would challenge you to do it. So in that nature, you know, we kind of got back and forth into some messaging and I feel like maybe I hurt her feelings and I feel bad because, you know, she's like, at this time, I don't feel like we can be friends and I'm not going to be your friend on Facebook anymore. And I was just like, okay, you know, but part of me was like, why did I need to even address this if she was being passive aggressive? And a part of me is like, I wasn't raised that way. If you say something that's offensive, I would rather address it to your face and be like, hey, do you have a problem? Let's talk this out. Maybe let's quarrel a little bit, fight back and forth. But at the end of this conversation, we can both figure out what wasn't working, make it work and either move on as being like, okay, we're not friends anymore, but we're cool. Or yeah, that was just a miscommunication. We talked it out. We had a little argument, but we're over it. And that's how it is in my house, in the butler's house. And I mean, that's how I was taught. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, put your hater glasses on and ignore people like that. But to me, it's like, I'd rather address this conversation and figure it out and see what the problem is and see what I can do to fix it or change her mind, not change her mind, but understand where she's coming from. But anyways, long story short, I decided that this statement is so true.
You never know what anybody is going going through in their own personal life. And so you never have the room to really point the finger and categorize or judge somebody or make a final determination about them. And I think that that is so true. I don't think that this girl knows what has gone on in my life in the past six years. And I for sure as one have no clue what she's been through in the past six years. And if she ever were to watch this video or to see this, I would say that I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings or if you felt like I was attacking you. I just would hope that you would understand that that comment hurt my feelings and just to kind of flip the tables and see that the things that I've been through in my life or let's go to lunch so I can tell you, you could see why maybe that comment would have been taken a little bit as offensive. And so on that, on those regards, I also want to challenge myself as well as some of you, if you're like me, not to, to choose to be or let yourself be offended so easily. And sometimes that happens to me. And it's so funny when I let that happen because it's like, at the end of the day, I don't think that people are genuinely trying to be mean or trying to get at me or be a hater. Sometimes people just have different points of view and that's okay. And I may not agree with them, but I don't need to be offended. Long story short, I just wish that I could be friends and hug you all. Come here. Come in. Bring it in for love. Okay, that was really close. Um, no, but long story short, Monday motivation. Let's just make this world a better place. Let's not be offended. Let's reach out our hands, help people out, love them a little bit more. Um, I got an email from Logan today, and he is doing really good, and I'm probably going to cry because it's my brother, and he has grown up so much, but he said, you know, he's like, it's crazy how much we take for granted in, in America and in our lives and the things we have, especially as us, like my family growing up, we've always had you know, more than our basic needs. And he said, some of these people out here were going door to door trying to teach him about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And some of them don't even have doors to knock on. He said, they're eating off the floor. And he said, the first family I went and taught, um, I guess in Argentina where he's at, it's kind of like Italy. Like you greet people with a, br a brief kiss on the face. And Logan said, of course, I messed up my first one. And he went in to kiss this guy on the left and the guy went left and they like both went in and kissed each other. And so Logan's like, yep, first time I kissed a guy today was on my mission. So anyways, it just, he said, you know, live an honest life, keep a humble heart, work hard and love with all you have. And I think that that is the best advice for this Monday. And, you know, looking at the story on Facebook, it's like, it's social media. It's not something that I needed to let get to the better part of me because then she went on to post some, something else after she defriended me about me being a bad mom and pawning my son off and caring more about my work than my son. And and that's when it hit me that it's like, you know what? I can't get mad at her because she doesn't know what's going on in my life or she doesn't know what Cooper and I have been through or what I'm currently going through and how hard that it is. And I don't know what's going on in her life. So what matters and what I can control is how I feel and how I live. And, and what I need to do sometimes may just be by an example. And that would just probably be not putting the energy out for something like that or not reciprocating her feelings of being hurt. And again, I'm not making this video to call her out or to get sympathy from you guys. I'm just trying to bring awareness to the fact that sometimes the only things that we can control our inner elements are within us and that at the end of the day, good is still good and bad is still bad and you have to actively choose to want to do the good things and the right things in life because they will bring you happiness and at, at, at times it may feel like you're doing all you can you're like, I'm still not getting answers, I'm not still not seeing results but I promise you that you will if you keep doing the right things. Like Logan said, keep a humble heart, live an honest life, work really hard and love with all you have. And I think that those are four goals I want to work on. I want to be a better person. I want to choose not to be offended. I want to choose to put more love out there so that if anybody thinks that what I'm doing is easy because I just seem like this type of a girl, I want them to look at me and be like, no, that girl works her, her butt off and she has a heart that's prettier than the physical. And to me, that would really mean everything if people saw me for that because I feel like that's how I want to see myself. So anyways, I love you so much. This was literally 19 minutes of just rambling. But I'm so grateful you guys are here. So grateful the Denver Broncos won. And I'm excited to see all you Seahawks fans at the Super Bowl. I'm not even scared. But tune in for tomorrow because we're going to have more to talk about football. Um, I love you and we will see you tomorrow for Two Funny Tuesday. Go brush your teeth and go give your mom and dad some loves.